Hello, I'm Renata with Renata's Garden and welcome to another episode of Unearth Horticulture. In last week's episode, you saw me planting a container vegetable and herb garden out on my front porch. And I mentioned that fertilization is really important when you're container gardening. So today in this episode, I am going to address uh, fertilizing container plants. Fertilizing container plants is very different from fertilizing your in-ground plants or in-ground garden. And that's simply because in-ground means that you've got the nutrients, mineral nutrients that are already present from the soil. And you've got a basic level, um, you're not starting from scratch, basically, with the amount of nutrients that are already present. And a good way to find out what nutrients are in your specific soil is to do a soil test. And you can contact your local extension agent to find out more about that. Um, but that's not what this video is about today. Today I am going to talk about container fertilizing. And this applies to your indoor house plants, but also to your outdoor container vegetables and herbs. So first things first, how do you know when it's time to fertilize? Well, it's all about the growth that you're seeing on your plant. There are two kind of, um, two kind of telltale signs that you can look at to determine if you need to fertilize. One is the time of year and if your plant's putting on new growth. Usually at this time of year in April, May, June, you're starting to see at least your house plants or your newly planted vegetables in their containers starting to put on lots of new growth. And whenever a plant puts on new growth, it's using up resources. It's using up mineral nutrients and it can use the extra support that you give it by supplemental fertilizer. So um, it's always a good idea to kind of look, do I have new growth coming in on the plant? Uh, is, it, is the new growth deep green? Um, look at older leaves on your plant, especially indoor plants. Do you see any kind of leaf yellowing or leaf drop of mature leaves? Sometimes plants drop older leaves naturally, even no matter how much fertilizer you add, but sometimes they drop older leaves as a sign that uh, they're kind of substituting those old leaves, taking their nutrients, their stored nutrients, and putting that in, relocating that into another area of the plant, typically the new growth. So the two signs, just to be clear, that you're looking for are, uh, does my plant have new growth on it? And two, do I see any kind of mature leaf drop or mature leaf discoloration? Both of those can be signs that it is time to fertilize your container plants. There are two types of container plantings to pay attention to that are kind of two different categories when you're fertilizing. One is your annual container plantings that are outdoor, like vegetables, herbs, flowers, things that I planted last week in my episode. And then the second is interior plants. These two can be treated differently because your interior plants you wanna keep with you obviously year to year. Whereas your vegetables and annual flowers, your flowers that are going to die after one year when, when it becomes winter and too cold for them, these plants you're only gonna to need to fertilize for four to six months and then be done with it. Your interior plants you need to have a fertilizer regimen uh, year to year. So first let's talk about vegetables, herbs, flowers, things that are not going to, to last year to year. This, my friends, is Osmocote Slow Release Fertilizer for flowers and vegetables. And this is what I use for my container plants every summer. There are a couple methods you can use to fertilize your plants. One is by mixing it into the solution uh, to dissolve it into the water that you use when you water your plants. And the reason I don't do this method is because it can often be inconsistent. Um, I have a whole greenhouse to take care of and so I tend to forget, yes, I do too, I tend to forget to fertilize or water consistently um, and so using something like this, slow release fertilizer pellets, can help you to keep a more consistent nutrient routine for your plants. Uh, this is what they look like. 
They're just pelleted. It's just pel pelleted fertilizer. And it slowly breaks down as you water over four months. This goes over four months and releases nutrients to the roots of your plants and supports growth. Just need to apply this in the first one to two weeks of planting your vegetables, herbs, flowers, and it will stay with your plant and you can just keep watering it as needed and you're good to go. Very easy, very controlled, very effective. Um, you just follow the bottle recommended rates and if you have questions, let me know. Sometimes these can be a little bit confusing. Um, this is the way to go. When you apply it to your pots, um, when you apply slow release fertilizer, you need to make sure that you spread it evenly across the soil surface and work it into the top inch so that it doesn't blow out or wash out when you water. And um, the reason you spread it evenly out is because then it can evenly distribute to your plant's roots. Now let's talk about houseplants. Um, Fertilizer is important for your house plants, and that is because they're planted in a soilless medium, a soilless rooting substrate uh, where they don't have nutrients in their soil unless you add it. These nutrients are necessary to see new growth, healthy new growth, and if you don't fertilize, there are a few things that can happen, including um, leaf drop and stunted growth or even complete plant demise. So it's very important to fertilize. What type of fertilizer do you need to use on your interior house plants? There is a lot of information out there that you can check out on interior house plant fertilizing. However, there is a good standard that you can just turn to that is easy and efficient. Um, and guess what? It's Osmocote Slow Release Pelleted Fertilizer. Um, this is just a standard fertilizer. So if you have specialty plants like African violets or orchids, you may consider um, you might need to use a different type of fertilizer. Reach out with questions if you need, uh, need to know anything about specialty plant fertilizers. However, for most foliage plants like your philodendrons, monsteras, um, just most of your house plants, you're going to be able to use something like this, the Osmocote pelleted fertilizer. And you can use the bottle instructions. This is both for outdoor and indoor use. And um, for indoor plants, though, it recommends using half the bottle rate. I would even say a quarter to half the recommended rate is required. And that's simply because interior plants are not outdoors. They don't grow quite as fast as plants that have um, that much sunlight and uh, they're not they're not annuals. They can't handle as much fertilizer typically and if you see any kind of leaf tip burn or Lower leaf drop that can after you fertilized it can be a sign that you've burned your your plant and you want to avoid that at all costs so it's always better to err on a um, Conservative side and not fertilize too much. So a quarter to half the rate recommended um, they say one capful per two gallon pot and a capful is three tablespoons so that's for the outdoor rate so that'd be half a capful which is one and a half tablespoons per two gallon pot now two gallons is quite large so if you have a smaller like a four inch pot you may only need to use like one to two teaspoons even now that doesn't seem like very much but a little goes a long ways so evenly distribute the pellets across the top of your potting soil so that it evenly distributes to the root zone and then work it in the top one to two inches to help it um, to keep it keep that fertilizer in the pot in place so this is for every six months so that means you can fertilize march through may at one one time and then it'll be good for the summer so um, and then you may not actually need to fertilize again it says every six months but there is very slow to little growth to even no growth in plants, interior plants during the winter because of the low light levels. So if you don't see new growth, usually you don't need to fertilize. It's very unnecessary and actually is a little bit wasteful. So March through May, add this one time and your plants should be good to go. All right, so that takes care of fertilizing both indoor and outdoor container plants and uh, if you have questions about fertilizing, don't hesitate to reach out. I'm happy to answer questions about rates 
recommendations, specialty plants. Um, fertilizer is a really uh, interesting and important part of gardening and indoor gardening. So uh, don't forget about it. Don't neglect that part of it. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this information. It pro provided you with some good, some good knowledge moving forward. Uh, let me know if you have questions. And until next time, you've been watching Unearthed Horticulture.